I have a lot of behind the wheel time in Corvettes. I actually rebuilt this C5 Z06 from the ground up. Out of all of the generations of Corvette, other than the C1 and C2, the C7 is the one I have the least amount of time behind the wheel of. Now over the course of the last week, I tore into this C7 Grand Sport and I did a $3,500 brake job on it. Now instead of charging for labor, I told my uncle I wanted one thing and one thing only, and that was to drive his car for 24 hours. <laughs> So let's start up this 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 that sits in the heart of this C7 Grand Sport. Let's go bed these brakes, let's take it out and drive, and let's see how it compares to a $135,000 Jaguar F-Type SVR. I'm even willing to let go of the keys of the SVR because I'm probably going to be having way more fun than he will be having in the C7. Yeah, let, let's see what the difference is on these cars. On the used market, these cars are actually very similar in price. Let's take a listen to this 575 horsepower, 5 liter supercharged V8. No supercharger here, but what we do have is 460 horsepowers coming out of, like Austin mentioned earlier, that 6.2 liter V8. I'm currently behind the wheel of one of the fastest stopping vehicles that has ever been produced and Skyler here, my passenger, is going to hold the camera as we bed these brakes. Skyler, are you prepared to see what it feels like to stop in a vehicle that is one of the fastest stopping cars in the world? All right, well, what we have to do is go about 50 to 60 miles an hour, slam on the brakes to go about five, and we have to do that on three separate occasions. So we're gonna see just how fast one of the fastest stopping cars in the world stops. So let's get a little distance between us and the cars behind us and see how this feels. First stop of the day, we had to uh, go meet up with some friends to cruise to the cruise. And he's showing off her, her new, what is this, Traxxas XRT? XRT, man. Sweet. Yep. So just go ahead and start it with start this guy. That's it. That's the one. It literally right has pistons in it. Chilling. You can hear it. Chilling. This thing is massive. Literally the size of the entire trunk of the Miata here. This thing's pretty sweet. Let's go rip it around. My dad has arrived in the F Type. Zen is taking the C5 Z06 today. <laughs> Looks like a good time. Thing's massive. And Solomon has arrived in the big turbo Silverado. That thing looks absolutely fantastic. He actually has the same front brakes that this C7 has on that Silverado. Back into the C7 we go. Let's go ahead and hit the road. Ugh. Good morning, we have arrived. Look at all the cars that are gonna be in the cruise today. Let's go walk the lineup and see what's cool. It looks like we're not the only C7. Got a C7Z06 here. Looks like we have another C7Z. Love the color combo on this one. It's got the tan interior too. New BMW M2 and right in front of that we have the C7 Hennessy ZR1 HPE 1200, 1200 horsepower in this thing. Got some R888Rs in the back. Man, I'm sure this thing is an absolute riot to drive. Let's see what the C7 has off the line. After I've been driving for the C7 for a little bit here, one of the things that I actually like the most about it that I wasn't expecting necessarily is how much I actually like driving it in tour mode. 
I've just been cruising around. I really haven't been reefing on the car at all. Like I've actually floored it only a couple of times. But what I enjoy most about it is how, how unbelievably cool and track oriented of a car this is, yet how it can be so comfortable just driving normally. It, the suspension is phenomenal in tour mode. The steering is is spot on. Like the, the feedback that I have through the wheel, through the brake pedal, the driver engagement points, they're pretty dang good in the C7. And it makes it a true joy to drive just on these back roads and you know, here in the middle of nowhere where my C5 is so rowdy all the time and it's just so obnoxious all the time and you only get enjoyment out of it when you're absolutely reaping on it and pushing it around corners, where this, I can get enjoyment out of it by just cruising around town. It is so awesome. But when I do flip the dial over into track mode, there is something that I am left missing compared to my C5. It's not nearly as aggressive. It's not nearly as rowdy. As you can tell right now, I'm having to shout because you can't hear me over the C5 in front of us. There's just something about the C5, the C6 platform that they're not refined at all. They're not enjoyable at all to drive around town. They're miserable, they suck. And that's something that I almost like about the C5, C6. It makes it more of a weekend car, a track car, where the C7 here feels like it could be more of a daily driver or a, a normal day-to-day -day car. There's just something about those other platforms that are so rowdy that the C7 is lacking. But there's also something to be said at the fact that it is not as miserable to drive about the C6 and C5 all the time. Because, you know, for the older generation, for people over the age of 40 that aren't, you know, still uh, enjoying being miserable behind the wheel of a car all the time, uh, there's something to be said about the fact that this car is faster than the C6 and the C7 in every single way possible. It's a better car in every single way. They advance every single time. They're faster on a track, they're faster in a straight line, they're faster in a drag strip, they are faster, they are better, and there's no doubt about it. There's no questioning that. And there's something to be said that it can be this comfortable while being faster than those cars while doing it, which is pretty, it, it is phenomenal. There's no doubt about it. The engineering that went behind this car and the fact that it translates through you as a driver, you can very easily tell through the different generations. It's pretty cool. Something else that's kind of weird to me is how similar this car is to driving the C8. Yes, the C8 handles way better and it's a different driving dynamic completely than the C7, but in the sense when it comes down to refinement, they're about equal when it comes to being just as refined as cars. It's like the C7 was their peak when it came to being as comfortable as a road car as they could be, because the C8 is equally as comfortable on the road. I have a lot of driving time behind the wheel of C8 Corvettes, and they're equally as comfortable, they're equally as easy to drive, um, but obviously with the different layout, they just handle different. On the, the C8, we're sitting on top of the front axle, where here we have the same view that you get in the C5, C6, C4, and all the other previous generations. That is my favorite part about this car, however, is how easy it is to control around corners like that. The tires are so wide in the front and the back that it is so easy to place exactly where you want to place this car at all times. It is so easy to control. The steering feedback is absolutely phenomenal. Let's see how this thing stacks up to a C5 with the cam in it.
the cars fast, they get so squirrely on, in a hurry. The C7 will get squirrely at the last second and you have to overcorrect it or correct it. It's like the C6 and the C5 are easier to slide around than the C7. I'm not sure why that is, but that's kind of how I feel. Check out these views. I love Minnesota in the, in the early spring. So beautiful, great weather. These mountain views are hill views. You don't really have mountains here, but beautiful. Just after taking it around some more corners uh, on some of these twisty back roads here in Welch, Minnesota, absolutely amazed at how the Magna Ride system works in this car. The difference between Trax Sport Tour is absolutely phenomenal. Trax a little bit too stiff, and I've read that, that some people actually, uh, I believe, drive it in sport on, uh, like they put it in the sport suspension setting on track, but it is absolutely phenomenal the difference that it makes and how comfortable this car can be to how like pointed and precise this car can be and also how it changes the steering feel and just tightens everything up. Very impressive sus uh, suspension system that they put inside of the C7 Corvette and it still uses the same leaf spring layout as the C5 and C6, which is crazy. There's a, a horizontal leaf spring in the front and rear that is actually the spring that they use and then of course the shock towers and the way that the control arms are set up. is actually the same as the C5 and C6, but they've changed the design of them minorly and obviously, uh, you know, with with time comes new engineering and parts and stuff like that. Just got back on our cruise with the C7, put about 70 miles on it, and I think I formed an opinion on how I feel about this thing. First, let me put this roof on here so we can talk about it. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty simple process to put this roof on. Now I just gotta go in and do two clips. It's kinda nice that it has a dual personality like that without having the gross body lines of a convertible. I had a lot of fun behind the wheel of the C7 today, and it is a great car. There's a lot of things that I absolutely love about it, and it does everything really good. It's fast, the transmission's great, it shifts pretty good. There's about a little less than a half second delay when you hit the paddles. Not the biggest fan of that, just the minor delay between uh, using the paddle and the transmission actually shifting. Granted, when it does actually shift, it shifts like rocket fast. It, it is lightning quick when it does shift. A uh, big fan of the engine and powertrain. I really like the dual personality of this car being a super laid back, comfortable cruiser. And then also like a very focused track car when you put it in the right settings. And it does that quite well. The handling is fantastic. The overall uh, feeling that you get behind the wheel is by far greater than any other generation. You have the best feedback of pretty much any generation Corvette that I've driven other than the C8. Actually, I think it is better than the C8, which is you know, it feels a little bit numb. You don't have a whole lot of feedback because they changed the system due to, of course, it not having the same steering shaft or steering rack uh, compared to the front engine vehicles. So out of any other generation of Corvette, I can say the C7 is obviously the greatest front engine Corvette, but not only the greatest front engine Corvette, but probably the best Corvette when it ever came to driver engagement because it has the greatest steering feel. It has a great brake pedal feel. It has, uh, I, this is, of course is not the manual, but in the manual car, the clutch and shifter feel is fantastic. I have had the opportunity to drive a manual C7. And the overall uh, automatic transmission, the eight speed that's in here is somewhat engaging as well. It is very good at everything that it does. It is an amazing all around car. But when it comes to being a Corvette, I just like when they're a little bit rowdier. Maybe this car needs another three, four, 500 horsepower. I don't know. But I do know that on an older Corvette, the ones that don't have as good as a traction control system, the ones that don't cut to four cylinders, the ones that are just a little bit more aggressive, well, they're just a little bit more aggressive. This is a great car for the majority of people wanting to buy a Corvette, but deep down in my soul, I like cars that are rowdy, that scare the living crap out of me, that make me not want to get behind the wheel of it again. And I just feel confident flooring this thing around every single corner. I know what it's gonna do. I know how to control it, and it is amazing. I love the C7. It's an amazing car. It's just not rowdy enough for me. One of the things I didn't forget to mention on the C7 that I think are really cool is that not only does it change across generations, and of course it gets more like smoother as it goes, but if you kind of think about it, the C, the every generation of Corvette has kind of gone with the generation of people as well for the price range. You look, start looking at C7, C8, they're a lot more refined cars because they're gonna be for the older clientele because of the price point that they're in. They're a lot more luxurious, they're a lot easier to drive on a day-to-day -day basis versus the older stuff, which is starting to get in, you know, people like mine, mid-20s price range. Like, you can, you can just go enjoy uh, these vehicles and as we get older, we're gonna start to appreciate, want something more comfortable and these will be in our price range again. So, and my age, in my early 20s, these Corvettes are at a really cool price point right now. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video here today where we talked about the C7 Corvette. There's going to be a video coming up here. My dad and I got a little bit uh, just too comforted around the wheel and enjoyed driving these cars a little too much today to the point that we didn't swap between the F-Type and the C7. So there will be a video coming in the future of comparing the F-Type SVR to the C7 Grand Sport since they are so similar in price on the used market. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time.